Let's continue our introduction to Solaris and Karma by building a base material and starting to light our scene. So this project file, as always, will be available on Patreon, but let's go ahead and clean up our scene a little bit here. Well, there's a couple things that we need to do, and then we'll start to move on to some other fun stuff. So let's rename this stop create to scene just to clean things up. And then we also need to rename our spheres here. So let's dive in here and let's drop down a, another name node. And let's name this spheres, spheres. So we didn't actually create groups for all of our boxes. So everything, if we jump back up to our stage, everything is just uh, going to be under this one geometry. So we need to actually go back and either, you'd either need to change all the name nodes to allow you to shade them differently, or we can just give them different groups, which we already have set up for the spheres. So that's what I'm gonna do. So let's select all of those group nodes, alt, click, and drag. And we can bring these all the way up here. Click and hold Y and drag across and we can cut all those connections there. And I'm just going to assign these to our geometries here. I'm um, just going to do this quickly, kind of based off of how I think they would look good. Again, they're going to be assigned to... Um, they're going to be assigns, assignments for materials. So this is all just going to be kind of personal preference. You can do what you want here, but personally... I'm just going to throw some things together here and see what I would like. We can always come back to this later on and change this. So don't feel like you are locked in. That's the beauty of Houdini. We can always come back and change this later on. You don't have to fully commit to anything. So just assign the last one here. And we'll jump back up to the stage context. And we don't have our groups available to us in the scene graph, which we will need. So let's go ahead and make sure we have those imported. So come to our SOP create, come to import from SOPs, you can twirl these down, I'm twirl them all down, but it's actually under this import data and under this subset groups. Let's tick that on and let's import all those groups that we just set up. And now they are available to us in our scene graph. If we twirl that down, you can see we have our groups that are now showing up. Now, I like to assign or organize my stage in a very specific manner. So I like to have my all of my objects being created and then my materials that are assigned right after that. So that's the way I'm going to set up my scene. You can do this kind of however you want. But let's Go ahead and take our SOP create and let's give our materials right after that. So the way that you create materials in Solaris is with a material library node. You can actually assign materials with this as well, but personally I would say that you should use the node that is built for that, which is the material linker. And the reason I say that is the material library has kind of two purposes, right? You can create materials inside this and you can also assign them if you would like, but we don't have to assign materials. We can just create them with that. And we can use this material linker to actually assign all of our materials because it is solely built for that. You can actually bring in some materials like these are a material database that comes with Houdini 20 but you can also bring in an AMD Material X library and bring in some different uh, materials that way, but it's kind of solely built to assign materials to your scene, and there's a lot of tools in this material linker that makes it super easy to assign things. So I would definitely recommend using this instead of the material library, but we will need the material library to actually create the materials. So I'm going to drop down a merge node after this, and this is going to be where we're gonna wire in our lights into that merge. And then I'm gonna drop down the Karma render settings node right after our camera, because I like to have them all kind of in one spot. Karma, they're the render settings and the camera kind of go together in my opinion, so that's why I like to do that. Now we need to create our base material, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, Houdini 20 has clumped everything together with the builder nodes, so 
this is more in line with something that you see with like Redshift, where you have the Redshift Material Builder, or like V-Ray, or Octane, any of the other render engines basically have this, where you drop down a Material Builder for their render engine, and then only the nodes available to be used in that are, are showing up when you press Tab. So Karma CPU has the ability to read Vex, Vex shaders. Karma XPU does not. Karma XPU is built solely around Material X. So you will have to use Material X nodes if you want to work in or render in Karma XPU. So you're going to use either the Karma Material Builder or you're going to use the USD Material X Builder to use XPU. So we're going to be using XPU. I'm going to use only these two nodes. And actually, I'm only going to use this Karma Material Builder because that's all you need. Let's go ahead and dive in. And this is what you get with the Karma Material Builder. It's pretty clear what's going on in this one. I kind of why I prefer this one. But we also have the Material X Builder, and it's just a little bit less uh, clear as what's going on. So I don't really like this one. I'm just going to not use it. Let's go ahead and rename this to base. And we can jump in here and we can start to change some things. Now, for just my base material that I like to work with, again, this is just personal preference. I'm just gonna keep everything the same except for this specular. I'm gonna increase the roughness here to make this a little bit more of a rough material because I don't want to have my material being super shiny on everything while I'm starting to light my scene. I just personally don't like that. I like the kind of matte gray look as I'm starting to build out my scene. So let's come back up to the stage level here. And you see we have a scope that is created that has our materials in it. And just to show you, I guess we will uh, show you how we can assign materials with the material library. You can click this auto fill, auto fill materials and that's going to bring in our material, and then you can click Assign to Geometry. If I wanted to assign them to the boxes, I can just drag those into the geometry path. And you can see that they are assigned in the viewport now. If you don't see them in your viewport as assigned, you can come to this little icon right here and check that on or off, and that's going to turn your materials on or off. If you click and hold, you have some different settings. But let's leave it on for now. Now, again, I said I don't want to use the material library to assign materials, and I don't, so I'm going to click Clear. And we'll just bring that back just so it's default. And then I can come to our material linker here, and it looks like that has actually broken our material linker, so we should have a material in here. So let's delete this material library, and let's just bring this back. And let's go ahead and just... The Karma Material Builder. There are still some bugs with Solaris, and if you know a different way to fix that other than just deleting the materials, then let me know. I suppose I could have tried to unhook it and rehook it back up, and it might have worked. But now we have our materials available to us. So the way that we assign stuff in the Material Linker is by dragging them over to the rules. So once we have them in the rules, we can click in here and that's gonna bring up a separate window. So the top part is going to be where the assignments are. The bottom window, if you were to click on that, is gonna be where the exclusions would be. So parameter link excludes, and then the top one link includes. So we can twirl down this geometry tree and then we can twirl this down and we have everything that's available to us in our scene graph here. So if I wanted to assign them to the boxes, I can just click and drag and that will assign them to all of the boxes. But that's really not the power of the material linker. Again, we can click and drag like the circle in here if we wanted to assign it to that as well. Um, that's, like I said, not really the power of the material linker. So let's go ahead and delete these out. And if we click this little drop down here, we have some different things we can do. If I select all geometry primitives, it gives you this pattern here. So there's a bunch of different patterns that you can put into this little section. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know all of the patterns. There is a ton of them. And as far as I'm aware, there's not a, there's not like a documentation link that has like all of these in there. I could be wrong and I'll double check and I will 
correct myself if I'm wrong. But as far as I'm aware, there's not at this point in time, which uh, side effects, if you're listening, please, 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 please create one of these so that everyone can just quickly reference this because this is extremely powerful in Solaris and it's not really clear uh, what all of the patterns are. But I am going to show you some of them or some things that we can do with this. So we see with that all geometry primitives setting set, it gives us all of our geometry primitives in our scene here. So let's go ahead and just delete that out of here. And we can start to type some of our what we saw in there, I guess. So or like what we put in the naming convention of our like name nodes. So if I do a backslash and then scene, you can see that it's going to bring up our scene and now you can do another backslash and use the star and that's going to assign it to everything in our scene. So if I click apply now, you can see that it assigns it to everything in our scene that is under that scene X form, I should say. So if I go in here to the stop create and I come to, let's just do our spheres here, come to our name node and I do a backslash and we call this geo and then backslash spheres. That's going to assign it to a different X form. And now you can see that our spheres are no longer included in this list. And you can see in the viewport that the materials are not assigned to them. So that is kind of one way that you can go about uh, kind of breaking things up. But if we wanted to assign them to everything, which in this case, I do want to assign them to everything in our scene, we can just put a star in here and click apply and it's gonna assign it to everything in our scene. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just reset this back to what I had. So I'm not interested in having that under its own X form. And I'm just gonna click accept for now. And then we can drop in a light. So I can click on this area light here and that's going to bring us a area light into our scene. I'm going to just set our display flag back to the render settings and get rid of that connection and wire this into our merge. Now you can see that we have this light that is coming kind of from our where our camera was. Let's just look back through our camera. And we can, you know, crank up the exposure and we can start to see some stuff going on here. Now if I turn on our render, you can really see what's going on. And at this point, I would recommend that you turn on your render and start to actually render in your IPR. And the reason I say that is because we're going to start to look at some lighting stuff here. So this is honestly one of the biggest reasons that I tell people to work inside of Solaris. What we're about to look at is not available in the normal geometry context without third party plugins. And even then, or third party scripts, whatever you want to say, it's not in the default Houdini. And even with other tools that people have created, it's still not like it is inside Solaris. So I recommend just using Solaris for this because this is a major, major benefit to Solaris. So we have our light here. And when we go about placing this, we have some options here. So we have some tool tips up here. So if we click, normally it's gonna be in the edit mode. If we click on specular, My Houdini doesn't want to freeze. There we go. So if I click on specular, we can click anywhere in our scene and it's going to place the specular highlights wherever we click. So if I click on this part of the sphere, it's going to move our light and place our specular highlight right there. If I hold control and click and drag, I can bring our light forward closer to that point. If I drag it you know, away, I can bring it farther away and get more... Um, our light further away if you'd like. If I were to bring this into view and press control shift and left click and drag, it's going to increase the intensity of our light you can see over here. I'm gonna undo that. If you want to adjust the exposure, you can just you just need to do it through through this. I'm gonna reset our intensity though and our exposure. Let's just bring them both back. Now if I want to adjust the size of our light, I can press B. And if I click and drag, it's going to adjust the width. If I press B again, it's going to adjust the height. And if I press B again, we get back to our normal mode of adjusting our light. So I'm gonna just click uh, control and drag and bring this back. And I'm going to adjust the intensity down. 
just to give us maybe something like that. And honestly, like I said, this is really the power of of Solaris. So we can also, we have a couple different placement modes. We have Specular Diffuse and Shadow Diffuse. If I click here, it's going to place our Diffuse lighting wherever I click. And again, like I said, we can click wherever we want. We can even click and drag and, you know, adjust it that way to get really dial in exactly how we want it. And then we also have the Shadow. This one works a little bit weird. Um, I just recommend messing around with it and you know, seeing how it works. It's hard to really put into words, in my opinion, how it works. It's just kind of odd. So I mainly don't, I don't even really use that one, to be honest with you. I pretty much only use specular and diffuse. So if I just set our to specular, something like that, we can get a nice lighting to our scene. So that is really an introduction to what we're going to talk about for this video. I'll go into more depth in the next videos, but in between now and then, I would recommend playing around with the placement of lights inside Solaris. These tools are extremely powerful. They're super, super cool. And they make lighting, honestly, they make lighting enjoyable for people that don't like lighting. It makes it so much easier. Personally, I'm not a big fan of lighting. It's one of my least favorite steps of the process of creating images in 3D, but these tools make it so much easier and so much nicer to work with lighting. And I feel like I can get way better lighting than I could inside of Houdini. I already thought Houdini worked better than any other software when it came to lighting because you can look through your light and really place it that way, which you still can in here if you want to. You can come up here and come to look through light and do it that way. But you also have these extra um, light placing abilities inside Solaris that again are not available in the default geometry context of Houdini. So definitely work inside Solaris. It's one of the major benefits to working inside Solaris. But anyways, uh, that kind of wraps up this video. We'll go into more depth with the lighting and then more depth in with the materials as we go throughout this series. So stay tuned for all that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.